hello friends here we are again we're going to do a few more uh song reaction videos we're going to go to we are going to do what are we going to do today folks red-headed stepchild and this one is going to go out for a man named briggs okay he's a supporter of the channel he is a patreon and he's a good man he has good uh posts love reading his posts he's got a lot of good insights about a lot of things musically uh, especially Prince, and uh, we're going to do this, Red-Headed Stepchild. Let's see what's going on here. I have been coming to Bryant Park for a lot of years now, but this is a very special morning, and it, we're just mesmerized having Prince here. Mesmerizing. What a talent. And he also has a great eye for talent as well. Please welcome. He saw this girl when she was first 14. Now she's got a new album coming out in August. It's called Milk and Honey. Here to sing the uh, song from that redheaded stepchild. Please Taylor. welcome Taylor. Woo! So this is uh, on ABC, probably going to go on my Patreon here, folks, if I can't upload it to YouTube. Uh, he is using orange amplifiers. I have heard some people in the comment section have told me that he had also done some stuff with orange amplifiers, which are they're very popular amps. Uh, it looks like he's helping promote some new talent. She's got quite the voice, vocal range, that's for sure. Okay, these are another one of these questions. Is that the twins that normally do stuff with Prince? Uh, there's a keyboard player there as well. She's, she's got a great voice, this woman. I'm not familiar with her. Tamar, redheaded stepchild, live uh, with Tamar and Prince. Okay. So obviously, it seems like as Prince got on later in his life, he did a lot to help promote other artists, which is uh, pretty awesome of him. He hit the flange right before he hit the solo.
Okay, so a couple things on this, uh, a couple of observations I'm gonna share with you guys. So they had a keyboardist, they had a bass player, they were kind of staying back. Uh, the two girls dancing, the, I, I'm pretty sure those were the two twins. Everyone always refers to them as the twins. My God, they're in good shape, eh? They must work out for sure. Um, <clears throat> they were doing backup vocals. Everything I've heard from the twins are backup vocals are quite good. The lead, the the lead, the woman uh, Tamara, was it her name? Tamara. Great voice. She had a really good voice. Um, we're going to talk about the drummer in a second, Prince. Uh, so he seems to have done a lot to help promote other artists and their careers as he kind of got on later in his life. If you watch him play, his playing was great, solo was great, but his solo fit the song. He didn't go over the top or anything like that. He made it fit the song, and also. You know, Prince could take over a show if he wanted to, no matter who he was playing with, but he didn't. He kind of let her have the spotlight. Did you ever notice that? Uh, I did a reaction video last week to Gary Moore and, and B.B. King, uh, The Thrill Is Gone, and the two of them, they just, they had so much respect for each other. They weren't trying to overdo outdo the other one or anything. It was really amazing to see those two legends. Prince here, he's a class act. Like, he just... He let her have the spotlight. He didn't try and steal the spotlight. He stepped up during the solo. And, uh, you know, I, I can learn a lot about the guy just by <laughs> watching him play. Now, we got to talk about the drummer. The drummer was good. She was a heavy hitter. Now, for all of you that don't know about mixing sound or, or, or live sound, uh, they're in a huge stage. They're in an open air situation in a huge massive place. The sound's going to disperse. It's not going to matter. But if I was playing with a drummer like that in a small club or a smaller venue or a small club, I remember one time I played uh, in a band briefly with a fellow who, uh, a very physically large guy. He was, you know, six foot five or six foot six, probably well over 300 pounds. Uh, he was a decent drummer. He hit really hard, but when he played, he drank, uh, which quickly became a problem for me because I don't care if someone drinks or does whatever they need to do on stage as long as you can hold it together but as if the performance and your playing starts going down I'm going to have a problem but anyway what I'm trying to say is but he would hit the cymbals and he hit so loud it was it was so overpowering for the rest of the band when you're trying to mix the sound so sometimes if you ever see um, a drummer and they're playing behind that plexiglass plexiglass to, re uh, to kind of help isolate the sound if it's a really loud drummer. Uh, if I was playing with her, she was good. If I was playing with her though, we're in a small club, I'd be like, okay, can we put the reinforced plexiglass up just to kind of, so it's not <laughs> taking over anything else. Uh, sometimes really, really loud drummers can be very hard to mix. That's what I'm trying to get at, but she was good. I really enjoyed it. And uh, for a man named Briggs, that was a really good suggestion. Hopefully we can upload it to YouTube without any problems. So remember, practice hard, but practice smart. We'll see you soon.